the 20th video in the video series of orbital mechanics of python this one i'm going to be going over solar radiation pressure software so that i actually implement it into orbit propagator <clears throat> and i'm just going to do two examples a geostationary satellite and a molnia satellite so it's going to get straight to it in orbit propagator so first is the init function because you have to load in the splice files in the correct way that you want so in the init function over here i show this in the end bodies so there's a section here that's the same for end bodies and srp which is this which you're always going to need that leap seconds kernel and you're always going to need the spice t span so it's an array of times that you want your um, ephemeris data so if you want to do srp furnish the spice file of the central body and then add it to the spice files loaded list and to calculate the states you're going to need the because you want the states from your central body with for vectors that point from the sun to your central body so you need to put in your central body name here the time span frame because you can have whatever frame you want um in this when you're doing earth um applications usually just do j2000 which is defined up here but uh, other times you want to do a clip j2000 or any other frame that you're looking for and then the sun because the sun is the observer so it's pointing from the sun to um the central body and that's it for that so it's a uh, it's a little bit simpler than the end bodies and then for the differential equation here it's pretty simple so i went over the geometry in the last video but um you need the vector pointing from the sun to your spacecraft because that's the direction of the srp so the you need whatever at this time step you need the vector is pointing from the sun to the central body which um, uh, a lot of times is earth and then you're going to add to that your position vector and i went over the geometry in the last video so if you need a refresher you can just watch that and then for the magnitude of it i can put this side by side with the paper because there's one kind of confusing part which is uh which is a spacecraft uh mass to area ratio but before that you have this beta value which is one plus rho so one plus self dot per cr which is the coefficient of reflection um that's what i named it in this and then the sun g1 value uh which is here and then dividing by this um so if you want to divide by the spacecraft mass to area ratio, which is in units of kilograms over meters squared, you divide by it, your meter squared, which is your area, is going to be in the numerator, and then your mass is going to be in the denominator. So that's what I have here. self dot perts ASRP, so your um, your uh, your surface area with respect to the sun, which, as I also mentioned, is going to be different. Or we're assuming a cannonball model, so we're assuming that it's going to be constant. But when you take into account your attitude, it's actually going to change. But for now, it's just constant. And then divide by the mass, which is the mass is part of the state variable because we added in the mass. Um, we're doing thrust because your mass changes. So I just put it in the state variable. And you're going to need to pass it in the beginning, which I'll show. But you have your mass. And this also works for if you're thrusting and still want to count for SRP. You can still do that because the mass is being taken account for. And then here we have the norm of the vector pointing from the sun to a spacecraft cubed time or and that's the denominator and the numerator is that vector because from that you have you get uh, the squared because you have one magnitude on top three on bottom that just comes out to two and then it gives you the direction as well by using the vector so that's how that equation looks it's actually pretty simple we can just go into the software and then as far as how to use it in a script so i just have these two uh, initial conditions or one's um Monia orbit, and then the other one is just a geostationary. So how you use it in the perts, as usual, just do the null perts first, and then SRP equals true. You're saying that I'm going to do SRP. And then you just input your area of SRP, and then your coefficient of reflection, I just put it as 1. And then mass 0, I put as 7,000, because that's typical of a, of a geostationary satellite. So then you pass it. Oh, I'll mention the, how I did the area. It's just this, because you need it in kilometers as well. So you have to take that into account. Uh, just height width, and then... Because those geostationary satellites are actually really big. So you pass it in and you make sure you have your mass zero equals mass zero, just like you did in thrusting, and then perts equals perts, and all that happens. And I actually, I'm not going to run this uh, during the video because I've found that my computer gets really slow when I'm recording the video. So I'm just going to avoid doing that. So, But I have the output plots. So basically, this is what a geostationary orbit looks like. Uh, as you can tell, it's just it's very far out, very far away. And then for the cos for this with the SRP perturbation, it looks like this. And this is running for um, a whole year. So basically, I don't know if I showed that. But this simulation is going on for 365 days just because um, this perturbation is actually very small when you're at Earth orbit. When you're at asteroid orbit, it's different, but it's very small at Earth orbit. So you can see the scale of this, like the negative 8, 
Uh, that's like to the negative 3, negative 8, negative 10. And it's only changing a little bit in the um, diameter axis, so it's pretty small. And then this is kind of a special orbit um, with very high inclination. Uh, just looks like that. And oh, looks like that. And for the perts for this one, or for the classical orbital elements for this one, they look a bit different. Um, but you can see the magnitude of it is still really small. Um, argument of perigee changes by like to negative two, but besides that, and then two kilometers, but really, really small perturbation. So it's not, it's not as relevant at Earth as it is, say, at an asteroid or when you're going interplanetary. So that's it for this video. It's actually pretty quick. And so this is going to be my last video for now on Orbit Propagator because I finished all the perturbations and I only have a few other functions that aren't the most important. So I'm going to kind of go away from that for now and just focus on doing more applications of Orbit Propagator and then just different kind of different topics in orbital mechanics because there's a ton of stuff that I can do. So the next one's going to be just Tesla's trajectory. Basically, there's this website where you can... Um, it has, it's like a small body database. I'm not sure if it's that one or another one, but basically you can get um, the state vectors of Tesla's trajectory. So if you just get the first one and you plug it in and use Orbit Propagator to kind of propagate the orbit, you can see kind of where Tesla is at whatever point. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know anything uh, as usual, too slow or too fast. And thank you for watching.